Hey guys, my name is Dan. I'm a veterinarian and welcome to the channel. Today I'm talking about the mysterious respiratory illness in dogs. Now you may have heard about this before, but this illness we believe started in Oregon or the West Coast and it has moved somewhat across the United States. There's been a case possibly in Colorado and then on the East Coast as well. Now the tough thing guys to think about here is um, we don't know if all these cases are linked together, if they're all the same pathogen. What I do want to go over today is how you keep your doggy safe and also what to look for if your doggy may have this very mysterious respiratory illness. Now, number one, what are we looking for, guys? Now, kennel cough, kennel cough complexes, upper respiratory infections, nasal infections, all these are incredibly common. Now, this disease that we don't know what it is yet, some people believe it might be a mycoplasm, virus, bacteria, we don't know, but this disease causes a handful of symptoms. Now, these symptoms will look like a handful of other things. So symptoms include, but are not limited to, we can, we can see a cough. Usually that cough is wet and productive. The doggy will be lethargic. Also, we should have a fever, like Bordetella, Borgoseptica, or kennel cough. I don't see a lot of fevers, but this doggy will have a fever. So again, we're gonna have a cough. It will be a productive or wet cough in most cases. They're gonna be lethargic and have a fever. We're gonna go off food, be really weak. All these things should be cueing you in that you have a major issue. Now, we do see that that in this condition, we a, a, a doggy may go into the vet and may have symptoms of like kennel cough, a gag, a cough, but we're still eating, drinking, feeling pretty darn good. Now, as this progresses, a veterinarian may give medicines, antibiotics, uh, anti-cough medicines, uh, reduce inflammation, and the thing is, maybe we get a little bit better, but we continue to have that lingering cough. And what veterinarians are starting to notice is as we move forward, instead of getting better, like most kennel cough cases, they don't get better, and they get substantially worse. And it goes from just a cough, and they're eating, drinking, no fever, no lethargy, they're being pretty darn normal, progressing from that, and even on antibiotics, not getting better, and then bam, we have this mysterious uh, respiratory illness that is progressively happening, and then you take the pet in, you take the doggy in to the veterinarian, and even with IV fluids, IV antibiotics, things are getting worse, 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 and some of them, unfortunately, are passing away. Now. The tough thing is, as a veterinarian, I see a lot of doggies, and I see a lot of dogs with respiratory disease. I see a lot of pneumonia, too. And we don't know if all the pneumonia cases are linked, and we don't know if they're all caused by the same pathogen. So even though I saw on USA Today that uh, multiple states are, 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 are being identified as having this uh, respiratory illness, the thing is, we're, we're, we're trying to die, we're dying, we're, we're saying they have it based on their symptoms. So we don't know for sure what's causing it. And we don't know for sure if all the cases are from the same organism. So that's a real problem. We, we I do know that uh, a lot of state and federal and a lot of different entities are working really hard to figure out what's causing it. So having some patience to, until we can figure it out would be amazing. In the meantime, we need to make sure that one, uh, all dogs should be vaccinated, uh, again, especially a Bordetella or just any of your core vaccines because we don't know what's causing it. And we also don't know if underlying conditions like kennel cough or Bordetella bronchoseptica could be driving the problem. So for that reason, getting dogs vaccinated is highly encouraged. Also, if you don't have to get dog to doggy daycare, you probably shouldn't because we don't know what's driving it and we don't we don't know where it is and how infectious it is and how easily it's transmitted between doggies aerosolized or not or on fomites objects so for that reason we really shouldn't be encouraging big group play and doggy daycare and kenneline unless you really have to so you should still enjoy the beautiful weather going outside having your dog go on walks doing things that are enriching for the doggy but if you can limit close proximity if you can limit environments that are contained inside buildings and poor ventilation that would be super Again, we don't know what the pathogen is. We don't know a whole lot about it yet, but we are working to figure this out. If you believe your doggy is sick with any respiratory disease, you should always go see your veterinarian. They will do blood work, they will do x-rays. X-rays can diagnose pneumonia, blood work can look at white cell counts, organ issues, all kinds of stuff to assess how healthy and how comfortable and safe your doggy is.
Veterinarians are still seeing, guys, a lot of kennel cough. They're still seeing a lot of upper respiratory diseases that are not deadly. But because of what's going on now, being very proactive. And if your dog does have kennel cough and it's not getting better, being proactive and getting back in there to get treated is really, really important early on. Also, you know, doing diagnostics tests like PCRs and cultures and throat swabs are a really good idea right now just to make sure we understand what's causing this. To my knowledge, these things are being done, but the PCRs are not picking up any anything that is relatable on our list of differential uh, pathogens. All right, guys, I hope this was crazy helpful. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. You guys have a great night and take care. Bye.